So if we actually have the blue team attacking in this direction and just using the top third. So we're going to take four of the blue players for the part activity, playing against two defenders and a goalkeeper. Hi, I'm Vinny Holsall. I work for the FA Grassroots Development Team as Physical Education Officer for the South West of England. Today's session is called Fox in the Box Finishing. And we're going to be working with a group of under 14 players, uh, but this can apply to any age group, certainly from the foundation phase through to the youth development phase. So essentially, we are looking to play with two goals, because we've got two goalkeepers as part of our squad. Uh, if you have available to you marker spots, then they would be fabulous. And essentially, we're going to arrange the pitch into thirds. So, in terms of looking at finishing on goal, it's important that we consider the six key capabilities. And particularly in here, we're definitely going to be looking at the technique in terms of different ways to finish on goal. We're also going to be looking at movement to get into good positions whereby you can finish on goal. And in terms of setup, as I say, um, for this activity, typically you might have around about 14 players. Uh, formation isn't really that important, so I'm just popping on uh, my seven blue players, including a goalkeeper. And we'll actually put them in possession of the ball there at the back third. And then coming out the other way is, we'll mix it up a little bit here. So essentially, in terms of good practice, if we consider that within a typical session, our youngsters have arrived, we've set up an arrival activity, and then this is our first main game activity. And ultimately, what we want them to do is to maneuver the ball, obviously up the pitch, so that we can actually create shots on goal and lots of finishing opportunities. In terms of the general layout then, so organizing in thirds, is encouraging the young players to actually work through the thirds in terms of in possession. And as we said earlier, the key capabilities that we really want to zone in on are the movement of the players so that they can get into good positions and then obviously practice their techniques of finishing on goal within the game context. One thing you can also consider as well is a varied score value for each of the goals. So for example, a normal goal can simply count as one. You could actually encourage them to finish with one touch, which could count as two. You could also look at a combination play between a number of players, whereby if two players combine, for example, with a, ball, a wall pass, then that could be worth three points. Okay, so in terms of our main layout, how can we actually adapt that into a part activity? So the part activity goes like this. So if we actually have the blue team attacking in this direction and just using the top third. So we're going to take four of the blue players for the part activity, playing against two defenders and a goalkeeper. Coming in the other direction, just bringing another ball in. So this time we're actually going to have four of our yellow players playing 4v2 in here. So hopefully you can see as a part activity, as a progression on from the main game, we've actually got 4v2 plus the goalkeeper and 4v2 plus the goalkeeper. As stated earlier, even with this 4v2 setup, it's still important that the, so here we've got our yellow four on the ball. It's still important that these other players demonstrate good movement. So for example, the number seven might actually move into the space here but then position his or her body in a side-on position whereby should they receive the ball, they would then be able to finish on goal perhaps with one or two touches. So that technique of finishing on goal, which could be a slide finish, it could be a little dink over the goalkeeper, obviously that's where we can bring extra point values. So looking at the blue team here, obviously they are looking to create opportunities to finish on goal using those key capabilities of really good movement, 
good positioning as individual players, and that could be their orientation in terms of their body position, naturally getting side on, playing like a meerkat if you like, so they can see where the pressure's coming from. And obviously, so if in this situation here, we get a little bit of movement from our number two to receive the ball from four, then it may be certainly a one touch or a two touch finish. The one touch could be around the defender, uh, two touches could be just to create half a yard to finish on goal. In terms of realism, it's really important that we engage the goalkeeper and our two defenders for the three or four minutes that they're working within their repetition. So if the opposition do win the ball, so let's say that our goalkeeper makes a really good save, then as a three, they need to now play out from the back. And by playing out from the back, their challenge is, we could talk about creating space, their challenge is, can they actually move the ball up the third whereby they actually get the ball in control over the line. That would actually give the yellow team a point for scoring in effect, and therefore that's where our real element of competition, which is realistic, comes into play. As you can also see, a key element of our practice design here, as the blue team in this third are attacking, is that we've actually got four balls arranged safely around the outside of the playing area. So if this ball is now deemed as finished, then the blue team can actually go and engage with any ball that they want to and essentially the first ball they get to. So the number seven here might actually go and collect this ball and restart with a throw in. But depending on age and stage, it may well be that adapting your session that you encourage this player here to have the option to put the ball at feet and actually play like a free kick or even travel in with the ball. But that's how you can adapt your session depending on the stage of your players and what they need. So in essence, our part activity has the setup here with five balls dotted around the area so we can have a real tempo to that three or four minutes and then have a timeout. There might be a little bit of a team talk before we then move the players around so they all get an opportunity to attack as a four and defend as a two. In terms of further progressions using the step principle, we can think about the use of the shape or the size of our pitch. And if I just go initially with the shape of the pitch, in terms of we could, when we go back into the whole game, actually create channels down the side of the pitch, again using our marker spots. And we talked earlier about when we progress back into the whole game using our whole part whole methodology. So if in this situation here, let's take this ball off the pitch, if the blue team are actually working their way up the pitch and the goalkeeper, it might be right from the goalkeeper, distributes with real quality out to number seven, these wide channels could actually become a free zone, perhaps just for five seconds, where the number seven has the opportunity to travel up the pitch, whereby they can't be tackled. Of course, they can be tracked, so the number two could track, but that will encourage the number seven to actually, in terms of their awareness and their scanning, to get the head up and maybe look at a little bit of combination play in here, which could be one of our combination moves in terms of a, a wall pass, a one-two, to create an opportunity to finish on goal. So the use of the step principle is a really simple way to adapt and progress your session, again, depending on the needs of the players.